couple of weeks ago, a friend gifted me from a cedar they had salvaged out of their portion of their house that they were rebuilding. And they asked me if I wanted it. And I said, sure, has taken over my workroom. Those are maybe panelings. Stay tuned and watch my video to see how I turned all these scraps into cool and funky DIY wall art, all with scrap wood. Setting everything up is always step one in a new project. And honestly, the only reason I am showing this little bit of footage is because my sidekick Zola is just so flippin' cute. She is my Velcro dog. She is a blue healer. She is my Velcro dog and is never too far from me when I am working on a project. So I put my hair up. I got my safety glasses on. This is my first time using my table saw with no supervision. I'm very proud of myself. I'm just taking this cedar paneling and cutting it into strips and I'm just doing them all at once and then setting up my new belt sander that I got from Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. This has saved me so much time. It has really, really been a, a game changer and it the setup was super easy. Basically just straight out of the box is was the setup. After I cut all the strips, I wanted to go ahead and sand them all at once. It did; These pieces didn't really need that much sanding, but I did want to smooth the rough edges and just get them ready for the project. And my big idea was to use a vintage nautical chart on some of these slats because I just, I have a plan for them, but I wasn't quite sure how to glue the nautical chart on these little bitty slats and maybe I should have put the nautical chart on the pieces of paneling before I cut them into strips but I think that would have just been really super messy so I'm just doing this next best thing I guess and that was to um, put a bunch of glue on the slats flip them upside down onto the, the back side of the nautical chart and then clamping it down until everything is dried. But then the problem is once everything was dried, now I've got to cut the pieces apart. And I hope I'm making sense, but you can see here, it was kind of tedious and messy and the cuts weren't very clean. So the edges were a little bit raggedy. Some of the glue did come off and I ended up having to re-glue, but you know, it'll work out in the end. So now the fun part is the assembly. I'm taking a piece of MDF that I cut out of an old cabinet door that I salvaged, um, I think from the roadside. And because I'm gonna put a mirror in the very middle of it, I'm taking the mirror and just marking a circle in the center. Need my jigsaw to cut some of the longer pieces. And I am using my little rotary sander to sand the edges of the slats where the, um, you know, when I pull, when I cut the nautical chart apart um, after everything was dried, it just left really rough edges. And I wasn't terribly worried about it. I knew I could take my sander and, and get all of those off. And it looks like it's kind of ripping apart, but what it's doing is it's almost distressing the edges. And that's really the look that I want. I don't want it to look like, um, you know, it's gonna, it's looks old and weathered and kind of vintage. Just fixing a few loose pieces with more wood glue. The square piece of plywood is my template so that we have a uniform size all the way around. So I'm gonna start out with four pieces of equal size for the top, bottom, left, and right, and they're all going to be the same length. That's our starting point. All right, so I need to cut four. And now I start laying it out in the shape of a sun. So these are gonna be like the rays of the sun. I'm going to use plain cedar that does not have the nautical chart on it just to give it a little bit of variety and make it a little bit more interesting. So we're gonna start laying out this first layer in kind of alternating, um, alternating them. 
using lick of nails this time. Get my hair nailer. I have used sure. wood glue in the past to attach these onto the base, but liquid I've started using liquid nails recently and it just adheres better. It sticks better. The only problem is it's kind of cumbersome to use, but um, you know, I'll deal with it. And then just taking my uh, Bostic air nailer, and I think I'm using inch and a half brad nails this time, and um, just uh, that will secure them down a little bit more. And let me tell you, once you put those liquid nail, the liquid nails down, it does not move. It does not come off. I'm really happy with that. So the the first four rays are like the starting point. So those first four really set, kind of set the shape of the starburst, the overall shape of the starburst. It doesn't have to be exact, but it does help you kind of keep your shape straight. So to try to be a little bit more efficient, I put a dab of the um, the liquid nails on the ends of each of the pieces that I'm going to be gluing down and that's just to try to be a little bit more efficient with it. The first four sun rays I'm putting down are the ones with the, uh, the nautical chart and then what I'm going to do is start filling in with the um, the plain cedar and um, just kind of alternating as much as I can and you know sometimes it, it's not gonna fit exactly and you'll see in a minute sometimes I have to get a little bit um, creative with it those first eight rays sun rays are the base they're almost identical in length so now we have our template and now we can start adding in other pieces and I've cut some pieces just of various lengths and now I'm really going to start um, start piecing this thing together sometimes pieces will fit and then sometimes they don't and I have to go get a hammer and kind of encourage it to fit into a slot Once the first layer is down, now it's time to start prepping for the second layer. And again, it's wood, it's not wood glue, it's uh, liquid nails uh, alternating with nautical chart pieces and then plain pieces, alternating as, you know, as much as I can. And basically what you are doing is you're just going to overlap where you have gaps and you just go all the way around until you've done your second layer, just alternating the lengths and then alternating, it, well, filling the gaps, filling the gaps. And then I do like to add a third layer. I think it adds a lot of um, depth and visual interest. Here I am getting all fancy with my words, but it does. It just looks better to me. It makes it look more full and um, and you can see I'm cutting way smaller pieces. So they just, the pieces just get progressively smaller. And again, that third layer, you're just overlapping the, um, in between where the layers are, if that makes sense. And you'll, you'll see in a minute. And I'm using my liquid nails in the middle to secure my mirror and voila, she is done. Well, almost done. I got to clean up the mirror because I got dust in it. And then I do go around with my air nailer and just check to make sure everything is nice and tight. And voila, she is done. Let me know in the comments what you think. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my video and I hope you learned something new. How to use reclaimed wood to make something different. Thanks again. Bye.